worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the and adore you. Yes, Lord. We worship and that you glorify your name. Spirit of God, we ask that you glorify the Father. Let the glory of the Father set on us. Let it come down on us. That we might be carriers of his glory everywhere we go. That we might reign indeed. It is his glory that we enjoy. It is His glory that covers us. It is His glory that brings grace upon us, that confers the gift of righteousness upon us. Because of His glory, men will see Him in us and come running, come running to Him in the name of Jesus. This is what we ask this morning. As we learn at your feet, Lord Jesus, teach us your ways. Bring to our reminder, our remembrance, Holy Spirit, the things that the Lord Jesus instructed. Help us to come into a place of acknowledgement and acceptance and commitment to do, not just here alone, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I believe the Lord is healing. He's healing the heart of someone. Restoring hope. Restoring strength. Restoring life back into a situation that seems dead already in the eyes of men. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the hope that you bring. You said that you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for the life that you have given. It's a living well. It's a fountain that never runs dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this life that you have restored. You have brought strength back. You have brought healing back. You have brought hope back. Hope in you. Trust in your word. Believe again that because you live, Lord Jesus, she can face to walk tomorrow. We say this also for as many that might be needing this at this time. In the sphere of their situations, in the sphere of their influence, the things that are going on, the challenges of life, we declare life in the name of Jesus. We declare the Zoe life of God. We declare the atmosphere of the glory of God to shift the negative, to, to set up the negative atmosphere in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you, devil. Your hand is off the situations of God's people because the Lord has taken over and he has restored what was lost. He has restored hope again. He has restored life again. Glory to your name, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we have our seats? Amen. All right. In the time, we have to uh, look at the word this afternoon. Or is this, okay, this morning, still morning. Um, if you recall, in the first service, we talked about the main theme. Uh, media, please, can you help me work on that sound? The main theme for this morning's uh, word, which is reigning in your space. In the morning, we look at understanding what it means to reign in our space or to, to reign in life generally. And several things were pointed out to us and I made specific mention of three scriptures that emphasize or define our reigning identity. We looked at the first one, Matthew 3, sorry, Matthew 5, 13 to 16, referring to us as being the salt of the world, the salt of the world, and then the light of, sorry, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Praise the Lord. This too talks about influence. This too talks about uh, changing the narrative, changing the story, changing the situation, changing the circumstance of a particular person, or a particular group of people, or a particular entity or a particular place. Praise the Lord. Meaning, when salt comes into the equation, just enough salt. Of course, we know too much salt is not good, right? <laughs> but can there be too much salt in the kingdom? Salt is salt in the kingdom. Nothing like too much salt. The mania, oh sorry, the, the, I wanted to say the more the merrier. I said the mania. The more salt we have in the kingdom, in the world around us, the better. Praise the Lord. Because the world itself is bland. It needs salt. Praise the Lord. So, light also changes the circumstance of a place. I know Pastor Fumi used to refer to a particular message that was preached in another, in a former location where we talk about when the light is switched on, you can understand that space. 
You come into a room and without your knowledge, it is scattered. It is not experiencing what we call organization or order. Or even if it does, you are not aware of what has been arranged where in the room. And then you attempt to move or to progress further into the darkness. Well, uh, sorry in advance when you fall or step over something that could injure. But when light is switched on, it changes the story. Praise the Lord. It does what? It changes the story. Why? There is an understanding of that space. You know where the table is. You know where the uh, 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 chairs are. You know if there are things on the floor that could injure. You know if there is even something dangerous in there. You know where the chair is. You know where the bed is. Praise the Lord. You know where to sit. You know where to move and how to move. The Lord is our help. Light comes. Light comes in the name of Jesus. We are the light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness around us in our spheres of influence will not be able to comprehend us. Because the light of God is inside of us. We carry that light everywhere we go. We bring understanding to people because light is synonymous to understanding. Ephesians chapter 1 verse says the eyes of our understanding being enlightened or the art of our understanding being enlightened depending on the version. There is enlightenment when there is or there is understanding when there is enlightenment. Praise the Lord. When light comes, understanding comes. People see better unless they now choose to make the wrong choice. Now it is their own choice. It is their own fault. It is their own decision to make. But then when light comes, the opportunity to choose comes up. And many a times, many a times, people will gravitate towards light. So let us shine the light. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us shine what? The light in the sphere of influence that we cover. Because this is the influence we have as kingdom citizens to penetrate the secular society. The secular society cannot overshadow the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the bearers of light in the kingdom of God, of course, everyone in the kingdom of God is a bearer of light and must be a continuous light shining, carry the kingdom agenda. And as they move, they change the narrative in government, in the seven mountains as we know them and bring an understanding of how each of those mountains will on the wrong run allow the mountain of the Lord's house to arise because that is the goal that the mountain of the Lord's house will arise above all other mountains praise the Lord praise the Lord 1 Peter 2.9 1 Peter 2.9 quickly We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people. Hallelujah. If you are God's special person, can I see your hand up? Now, I said person. So, if you are God's special person, you can still raise your hand. All right. If we are God's special people, let me see your hand. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. His love cannot be quantified. It cannot be contained. Amen. Amen. Apostle Peter, privileged to receive this word for us, saying that we are God's own special people. That we may do what? Proclaim the praises of him. So there is a purpose. You know, there is nothing that God does without a purpose. Have you ever realized that? He calls you loved. There is a reason why he called you loved. He calls you forgiven. There is a reason why he said you are forgiven. He calls you separated. There is a reason why he has called you separated. 
He calls you called. There is a reason why he has called you. He said, may, that you may proclaim what? The praises of him who called you out of darkness. Out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. Bring it up in the TPT, please. Quickly. The Passion Translation. Thank you. As, okay. But you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings. Hallelujah. This will lead us to the next passage of scripture. But then let's deal with this first. Um, you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings. A spiritual nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Set apart as God's devoted ones. That is separated. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that, the purpose, so that you would do what? Broadcast his glorious wonders. Hallelujah. You will do what? Broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Meaning, wherever you are, your reason for being there is to do what? Broadcast God's glorious wonders. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So one, we are chosen. Separated. A treasure to him. That is, he watches over you like the apple in his eyes. Praise the Lord. Says that we are royalty and then we are priesthood. We are kings and priests unto God. Revelations 5.10. And we will do what? Reign with him on the earth. Praise the Lord. So there are levels of reigning. Amen? We are reigning with him right now and we will reign with him. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. We are reigning with him right now and we will reign with him. Praise the Lord. So, through authority and influence, still on this passage, 4 Peter 2 9, through authority and influence cannot be separated from a walk in purity. Now, we, 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 we regard being a king as someone who has authority and has influence, right? And a priest as someone who is separated for a pure walk, right? He is, he's meant to be pure. He's meant to be upholding purity, all right? So, but true authority and influence cannot be separated from a walk in purity and constant life of worship, can put that down. True authority and influence cannot be separated from a walk in purity and a constant life of worship. Because that is what the priest does. He lives in purity and he continues on in worship. He is, a, he is, he is a, a, an epitome of what worship is called, called when you look at the temple, right? The priest goes into the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifices unto the Lord in the old covenant. But we today are called priests as well as kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there is no reason why we will say we are choosing authority and influence without purity and worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The two must go hand in hand. You cannot leave one or take one and leave the other. There is a reason why both of them coexist. Praise the Lord. Jesus, the firstborn of many brethren, is our perfect example. He is the king of glory. And yet, he is our chief high priest. The high priest that goes into the presence of God, interceding, mediating on our behalf. With his own blood. Being the sacrifice. And. When you talk about the sacrifice. Talking about worship. And the priest himself. Being the one offering the sacrifice. 
me. That, that, that's glorious. Amen? That's what? Glorious. Let's go on. Christ has made us kings and priests to our God and we are now reigning on it by our worship. These are the three things that we are reigning by um, right now. Our life of worship, our sacrifice, submission, prayer, and witness of him in words and in deeds. Our reigning right now with him deals with our worship, that is our sacrifice, amen, and submission, and then prayer, intercession, praying for the saints, praying for situations, praying for cities, praying for circumstances, interceding, standing in the gap, and then our witnessing. Witnessing of him, praise the Lord. Witnessing of him in words and in deeds, praise the Lord. So we worship, we pray, and we witness. That is how we reign. That is how we reign. We'll break this down further. But then let's go on to, let's go back to Romans 5, 17. The abundance grace that God has given to us or made possible for us to experience. Romans 5, 17. Media, thank you. The abundance grace. Go to uh, the Good News Translation. Thank you. That God had made it possible for us through which we are coming into uh, a status of reigning. We call grace unmerited favor, right? That is, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But then, the gift of righteousness is more interesting. He looks at you, and despite all the flaws, immediately you say, I believe in Jesus. He sees Jesus when he looks at you. He doesn't see the filthiness. He doesn't see the sins. He doesn't see the hopelessness. He doesn't see the weaknesses. So why do we see those things in ourselves? We need to change how we look at ourselves. We need to change our confession of ourselves because this will change the narrative inside before it changes the narrative outside. When you look at yourself as one whom God has bestowed righteousness on top, on, on, on rather, then you change the way you think about yourself. And then it affects what you do eventually. If I am told I am the son of a king, if I was in a life that was against that before, consciously I come into awareness and I begin to live like the son of a king. I begin to ask questions. How do sons of kings walk? How do they move? How do they eat? How do they talk? How, do this, how is their outlook to life? Praise the Lord. An understanding of all of this will help us to change the way we look at life one, or rather, the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at life, and the way we embrace responsibilities in the kingdom. You will realize that there, are, there is an urgency to the matter and then there is a matter to the urgency. Praise the Lord. Our desires will be cured. We need curing of our desires. Our taste buds, we need to be brushed and cleansed. Our thinking, we need to be fine-tuned and realigned. Why? Because you suddenly knew or came into awareness that I'm a king. I'm a what? I'm a king. Or I'm a king's daughter or son. And then all of a sudden, your narrative has changed. For example, 
A boy comes into understanding in the earthly realm now that his father is a king. What happens? He runs, tells all his friends, my father is a king. My father is a king. Yes or no? He goes out announcing it. Why? Because being a king's son is exciting. Being a king's son is a status change from what he was experiencing before. Being a king's son suddenly changes his life. Praise the Lord. There is a life change that occurred to that boy when he came into awareness that his father is a king. So why do we not relate with the Lord, with the God of heaven, the same way or even much more than that boy will relate to his knowledge of being a king's son? All of a sudden. Why do times come when we suddenly feel that nobody likes us? We are the worst of all human beings. Depressed and worrying and anxious and sad and fearful. These are the things that are called to somebody who doesn't have the mentality of being a king. Because he doesn't know that he has authority. There's a Bible passage that Fumi usually reads. I think it's in the book of uh, Psalms. That a, a man who is in authority and doesn't know it is like a beast in the field, right? That perishes. A king knows he's in authority. So when he steps into anywhere, his mind or mindset of being a king kicks in. Praise the Lord. He does what? He kicks in when he sees disorder in the spirit realm. We talked about it the last time, uh, in the first service rather. When he sees disorder in the spirit realm, being a king in the spirit, and of course in reality, he switches into authority and influence and begins to declare no weapon, no weapon formed against these people or this environment shall prosper. I take authority over this place in the name of Jesus. And the dynamics of the spirit realm shifts to align with the kingdom purpose. The authority of Jesus reigns in this place. I bring into subjection every authority, principalities and powers that want to take or hold sway in this place. He begins to declare. Why? Because he knows that he has authority over them by virtue of whose he belongs to. Who has sent him? Jesus said, as my father has sent me, I am sending you. Praise the Lord. As kings that reign on the earth, our story must change. And align to God's purposes and plans. God had made it possible that abundant grace, that is unmerited favor, is settled for us. We did not deserve it, but he gave it to us anyway. And then the gift of righteousness, being looked at, and all the acts of wickedness or the flesh of the past are suddenly gone. You are now the righteousness of Christ in Christ, in, in, uh, God in rather. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the way God looks at you, he sees the Lord Jesus. That changes your status. That changes your personality. That changes your identity. And then you begin to walk in the reality of that identity. Praise the Lord. What Jesus did make it legally possible for us to reign in life. We must know this. We must grow in it. We must live it so that light can shine and the darkness can be dispelled. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2 8 makes us understand that it is by grace we have been saved through what? Faith. So, meaning there is an action that needs to be taken. Your belief, your constant belief, 
must kick in. Ephesians 6, I think that's in verse um, 18 now, thereabout, talks about us taking the shield of faith. Now, this is a continuous tense. Go back to, can you help me look for that verse? I think um, it should be 16 or so. Go to 16. All right, thank you. At all times, carry the shield, or sorry, carry faith, rather, as a shield. In other words, you are constantly in tune in your faith. Your faith is not up today and down tomorrow, or up today and down for five days, and then up again, like somebody said, Bitcoin. Praise the Lord. No, when, when you are taking, I mean, the, the market is uh, up and down, up and down, up and down, up, up and down everywhere. Eh? Like the children will say, up and down, up and down, up and down. Praise the Lord. Our faith should not be like Bitcoin. Our faith should be, the trajectory should be up, 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 up. Amen. God has set everything in its place and prepared everything for us. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 29, it gives us an understanding of what his desire was before he created man or when he wanted to create man. It was because of man. I dare say. Amen? It was because of man. I dare say that God created every other thing he created in, in the, before creating man. Praise the Lord. Why? So that man might have what? Dominion. Might live like his father in that space. Adam came into the scene and the first task he had was to name the animals. Praise the Lord. God did not call, uh, come to him and say, Adam, this one, we we'll call it kangaroo. This one, you call it hippopotamus. This one, uh, okay, let's call it tortoise. Okay, there's tortoise, there's tortoise, right? So he knew the difference. Tortoise, tortoise, whichever one. But God came in and looked at what he was doing. He said, ah, that's my son. He's exhibiting the character of his father. Creating names for things from things that did not, I mean, did he know, or was there a book where he saw the names and the pictures and said, okay, you, you will be tortoise. You, you will be hippopotamus. No. He had the nature of his father. So do we. Hallelujah. Where you will call things that are not as though they were in your situation. We have the creative ability. We have the creative ability. God has invested so much for us to fail him. If you are a businessman and you invest so much, all you think about is profit, right? You don't want to lose or uh, have a debit or deficit rather. God has invested so much for us to fail him on this journey. We must realize that this is our life. We have been called to this and there is no turning back. As himself said, he that puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. There is no getting scared or being afraid. He has made all that we need for life and godliness available. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He had prepared everything that man would need before he placed him in the garden. Chapter 2, verse 15. He gave man a purpose for living. We all have a purpose from God. Psalm 40, verse 7 to 8. Let's open that. Psalm 40, 7 to 8. Psalm 40, 7 to 8, quickly. says, and so I answered, here I am. 
your instructions for me are in the book of the law. How I love to do your will, my God. I keep your teaching in my heart. Give me New King James Version. I need to drive this home from that version. Verse 7. Good. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O God, O my God, and your law is within my heart. Ephesians 2 verse 10. That says, I am what? God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has preordained or predestined that I walk in. In other words, there are things that have been already concluded in the spirit realm, in heaven, concerning you and I. God has it already concluded. Just like he did for Jesus. When we called him the lamb that was slain, or we read in the book, in the Bible rather, that the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. So it has already been settled that Jesus will come to die before man was created. So if we are joint heirs with him, if we are brothers with him, if we are reigning with him, then our destiny is already settled even before we came. And our realization of that makes us, like that boy, ask, how do kings move? How do they talk? How do they walk? How should I act? How do I know the will of the Father? We begin to inquire. Our founding pastor said something. He said, inquiry Inquiry is a, uh, how did you put it now? In inquiry has a lot to do within the space of the prophetic. You cannot but inquire. You cannot but ask questions. Father, what is this that you are showing me? Praise the Lord. Every believer has an element of the prophetic in them. Because revelatory, uh, revelation, rather, everybody has to come into revelation at some point in their life or the other. And the prophetic has to do with revelation. And then when you have revelation, what does it stir up? Desire to know more. Hunger and thirst to dig deeper. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give us sight in Jesus' name. So we all have a purpose from God which we must find and fulfill. He has made all provisions for this. Take down the scriptures, 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4, Jeremiah 29, 11, 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4, Jeremiah 29, 11, Acts 17, 28, and Colossians 1, 17. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 10 to 12, let's read that. Open it up, media. Moses, or God through Moses, was speaking to the children of Israel. And here he was trying to let them know or understand that his provisions for them is something that he has preplanned. He said, For the land which, is, which, you go to, which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. Where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot. By foot there means by irrigation. Praise the Lord. By what? Irrigation. What is irrigation? You make effort to source for water to ensure that the plants survive. Right? Our farmers. Irrigation. For well, whatever, I mean, irrigation can be fetching water from 12 miles. Okay, maybe not 12 miles. But then a long distance and coming to pour it on the plant or the seed. 
Irrigation could also be mechanical. But I don't think they had mechanical irrigation then. And watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. Go on. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of heaven. Praise the Lord. A land for which the Lord your God cares. In other words, he cares for your land. The land he has given you, God has cared for it. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. Go back to verse 11. It says, but the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. In other words, the land or the purposes of God that you are to take, that you are to embrace, is a land that flows, or rather that drinks water from the rain of heaven. It is blessed. You know, we make choices. Two choices come to us, and we are looking at which path should we take. And you look at this one, and you say, ah, this one is juicy. And you look at this one, and say, oh, it's less juicy. And then you go for the one that is juicy, because it is juicy to the eyes. Eve looked at the fruit and saw. Somebody say, saw. Somebody say, saw. That is this word, desirable for food. And then he went on, or she went on to take of it and eat. And the Bible says she gave to her husband. The land that God gives, the purposes that he gives to men, they drink from the rain of heaven. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11, puts it more beautifully. As the rain comes from heaven and the snow Please put it up quickly so that we can follow through the particular version. Isaiah 55, verse 10. All right. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but does what? Waters the earth and makes it bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that goes be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Reigning in life has to do with the rain from heaven. Making ready the place of your reigning. Making ready the space of your reigning, that you might reign with ease. Praise the Lord. He has made everything available. God is so gracious. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about reigning in life, we are not talking about physical things. We are talking about the spirit realm. We are talking about turning up or uh, displacing principalities in places. We are talking about displacing authorities because the authority of the Lord must hold sway where we are. Anywhere we are. John 14, 6, oh sorry, 26, John 4, 24, John 16, 12 to 13 helps us understand that we cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. He is the one that the Lord has sent, or the Father has sent. The, another comforter, Jesus called him. The helper, he described him as. The one who leads us into all truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So our reigning in life, as it were, will be contested. But we are victorious. We say amen, but then we need to have the knowledge. We are victorious by the knowledge that God gives or made available to us. But if we don't come into that knowledge, then we shortchange ourselves. God himself said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. 
Glory to Jesus. You cannot reign in life with the nature of the flesh still present. So you must allow pruning. You must allow cutting of the flesh. You must allow things that you so much love to be let go. That is, you relinquish them. You submit yourself. We said before that reigning as a king, of course, you come into a place of king and priesthood as you reign. So priesthood helps you to worship, to come into purity. And you begin to learn how to live with the Holy Spirit giving you understanding of his fruit, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So being kings and priests, you cannot do without the fruit of the Holy Spirit developed in you. That's the difference between somebody who's reigning here. I mean, if you have a military man, I mean, probably even a corporal, and then a civilian or bloody civilians, like they call them. I'm not a, I'm a kingdom civilian, citizen. All right? So they call them bloody civilians, and they brush their car. They get down because they feel they have authority, power, influence, and then they begin to display it is my right to display because I'm wearing the uniform. Right? Praise the Lord. In that instance, same scenario as children of God, we reign as kings and priests by not displaying that foolish attitude. We display what? The fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness. Patience. Self-control. We show love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We would end here. Our source of grace to reign is from the throne room. Praise the Lord. Our source right, of grace to reign is from where? The throne room. The throne room of grace and mercy in prayers. Hebrews 4 verse 16. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. You cannot reign without bending your knees. You must bend your knees in prayer. You must know, that is where you know God's will. When you converse with him, when you fellowship with him, when you talk to him and he talks back to you. Let's bow down our heads. There's a song I want to sing right now. I don't know whether we know it, but um, it's simple. It says, Reign in me, Master Jesus, reign in me. Reign. Master Jesus, reign in me. That's it. I'll take it one more time. Reign in me. Master Jesus, reign. Jesus reign in me. Reign in us, Lord. Reign through us. Holy Spirit, rule in us. Take over our spirits, our soul, our body. Take us all. Consume us all with your holy fire and burn out everything that withstands you. Everything that contains for your space. Restore to us the joy of our salvation. 
Restore to us the fellowship that you seek, Father. Things that contain with you, uproot them. And plant the understanding of your will. Bring us to a place of alignment with your purposes and your plans that we might show forth your glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.